Leaves. I'm here because of leaves. Above, below, emerging, living, dying. They breathe out and I breathe in. I go heady with their oxygen. Even here, at the edge of the rainforest, their colours and shapes defy belief. Their decay releases a pungent earthiness. And tomorrow, when I start the Great Walk, their litter will cushion my feet. To come to them, I have turned away from things. Life in automatic gear. Familiar, habitual, comforting, yet strangely stultifying. What the Buddha, teaching in ancient India, defined as samsara. Samsara speed seems to be picking up. Life's all fast lanes, fast connections, fast food, speed dating, and fast bucks. So, here I am at Green Mountains, an hour's worth of fast driving south from the city of Brisbane. After fleeing along the freeway, my car has nosed west and climbed the narrow road. This is the plan. Rendezvous at Green Mountains. Slow down. Trust the unfolding of the journey. Here I am, Leaves, in my simplicity, as you are. How the early evening rain drums as we settle cross-legged under a tarpaulin to introduce ourselves. Forty people have gathered this year to do a Buddhist walkabout on the northern rim of the Tweed Caldera. By this time tomorrow, we'll have crossed the Lamington Plateau and be setting up camp at Binnaburra. From there, we'll swing down into a narrow valley, then climb up to neighbouring Springbrook Plateau, in all 80 kilometres. Tourist and bushwalking brochures describe our route as the Gold Coast hinterland Great Walk, but we are making it a Dharma Yatra. In Pali, a language of the Buddha's time, Yatra means life journey and Dharma refers to teachings. Instead of completing the Great Walk in the usual two or three days, we'll take seven because we'll meditate and walk mindfully as we go. I'm feeling apprehensive. I've walked two previous yatras and have barely coped with the physical challenges. My boots, always the last to find the campsite. The intros begin and I gaze with interest at the folk forming this year's circle. The damp young man next to me raises a laugh with, I'm unemployed and spend my time drinking green tea and playing chess. One thing you might not guess about me is that I have an extra disc in my spine. I look at him curiously. An extra disc? What else don't I know about my son? He's on this yatra because I've asked him to come along to help me. It's the first time I've asked for something significant from Declan, something for me. I'll be a Dharma bum with you, he agreed. He'd read Jack Kerouac's account of climbing a mountain in California with beatnik friends Gary Snyder and Allen Ginsberg, all of them quoting the Dharma and shouting out newly invented haiku to each other. He brought over the Dharma bums that had done the rounds of his share house. Hey mum, he insisted, before we go you've got to read this. The intro's done, our guide picks up a brass bowl. When I ring this bell, the yatra will begin, he announces. First, on behalf of us all, I wish to pay respects to the Yugambe elders, past, present and future, on whose land we gather. Crossing these mountains is an indigenous tradition. When we walk tomorrow, let's travel with a sense of the sacred. We slip into another dimension, a pilgrimage of our own making, a fusion of Eastern truth-seeking and the indigenous tradition of singing the land and learning from it. Night one, surrender to rain in rainforest. Morning. A kookaburra throws us a riotous guffaw from his perch, then flashes blue tail feathers. Around us, finches and robins flicker. 
Here in the largest area of undisturbed subtropical rainforest in Australia, it's spring and the birds are mating. The reptile world is awake too, awake and hungry. Wrapped in ponchos and raincoats of every crazy colour, we enter the Green Mountains forest, close ourselves into it. There's no horizon in this dreamy green. Well-hidden whipbirds crack, a riflebird screams, catbirds mew, a brown pigeon throbs, womp, womp, womp. Leaf, stone, leaf, stone, leaf. To a matrix of exposed roots, we add our pedestrian polish. Queen Victoria chose the name of Queen's Land for the colony that would separate from New South Wales. Let Queen's Land start at around 28 degrees south latitude and run west into the centre until it meets South Australia, she decreed in 1859. A team of surveyors began its work, a task that would take until 1866. The border surveyors became the first Europeans to enter these pristine forests. Their new world, ancient trees, huge caves, unusual rock formations, waterfalls tumbling, the whole place alive, 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 but impenetrable. Without the help, that is, of the Yugambeh, the people between the Logan and Tweed rivers, represented by their elder, Billanbillan. Without the presence of Bill and Bellin, it's unlikely that the Queen's servants, their horses, canvas tents, sextants, theodolites, chains and compasses would have ever been seen again. On the path, the sense of past, present and future can melt into one as leaf and earth melt into mulch. In this way, Buddhist and indigenous wisdom align. Everything is in relationship. Everything is interconnected. The conceptual mind can become a straitjacket only if you let it. Mountains can simply be mountains. How to walk a path? Go slowly, observe. How to walk a mountain? Go slowly, observe. Drink chai at sundown, sleep for several nights at the same place. Our second morning at the Binnaburra public campsite. The laughter of children rings out across the grounds while the Yatra cooks create a fragrant invitation to vegetarian kedgeri. A brush turkey struts around, his black tail stuck out like a rudder. He grabs the apple I've left outside my tent and streaks away, but there's a greater injury in our ranks. Wren has sprained an ankle. Wren is the young woman who spent years trying to save the old, old forests of Tasmania. On our trek across the plateau, she slipped, and ever since being assisted back to camp, she has lain under the communal tarp. Wren's garb is what mainstream society labels feral. Loose garments of hemp, necklaces of wood, tattoos on her forehead. Until learning that her name is Wren, like the bird, I've inwardly called her the tribal girl. Throughout the day, alternative healers have plied her with foot elevations, massages, rescue remedy, and grated raw potato poultices, all the same. Her yatra seems doomed. I'm wondering myself, if this heavy rain keeps up, isn't the yatra ruined for us all? The rain beats and beats. Another wet morning in Binnaburra. Marvellously, Wren is able to put weight on her foot and will hobble along on a short excursion to Kobani Cave with the rest of us. Our guide is smuggling this detour into our itinerary before we resume the Great Walk. 
After seeing the cave, Ren plans to hitch a ride with the support crew and meet us down in Namunbar Valley. Our narrow path hugs the mountainside. Opposite, a million shades of green. The tree ferns and cycads are umbrellas that shade us when the sun comes out. After a patch of track that dips, the cave, how enormous it is. It flows upwards, tsunami shaped, but gentle and soft. Once I arrive, I stand and stare. Then like the others before me, I ascend to sit quietly in the huge curve of its embrace. Where are the people who belong here? Where are the men making spearheads? The women opening their dilly bags with their haul of forest fruits? The children at play, flashing teeth as white as tea tree blossom, excited by the smell of roasting paddy melon. Instead, my eyes sweep over our colourful dots. The cave likes us, I'm sure, but it must long for its original people. On the move, you notice all sorts of small, beautiful objects and life forms. Without dropping pace, I snatch something up to keep me company for a while. I turn my object of desire over and over in my hand as I swing along, or secretly caress it in the pocket of my shorts. Today, I'm besotted with a giant panda snail shell. I curl a finger into it, commune with it. I pass a lone scribbly gum and read its note. Hey, watch a step, honey. My fellow Yatrians have romped ahead and I'm quite alone. Slow is good, I tell myself. Slow food, slow love, slow adventure. Listen, whipbirds crack, bellbirds tinkle. There's a moon on the night we camp next to the Namanba Valley Community Hall. In the morning, we're ready to move again. Before we segue into silence, someone tells me that Namanba means hold tight country. Reflecting the indigenous belief that the narrow valley hooks the two mountainous blocks of Lamington and Springbrook together, holding them close. She shows me on a map. The valley can be seen as a split in the rim of the Tweed Caldera, or as an entity reaching its two arms up, insisting on connection. Everything in dynamic relationship. Down relates to up, and it's up I'll go. Eucalypts and sombre cycads. Step up, step up, 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 up. The question is not the fractious child's one of, aren't we there yet? But am I here, right now? Beat heart, fill lungs, raise me up. The Great Walk ends here at Springbrook. But we stay on. We spend one day in meditation and then another walking mindfully through Springbrook Rainforest but the Yatra must end like a brilliant sunset that no one can clasp. We spend our last day stepping, stepping out to Pearlingbrook Falls. A black gorge opens into an amphitheatre of cream. The falls spill from a razor's edge of earth and sky. We lean back, exposing our throats and eyelids to random spray. A dance of water and wind anoints us. It's louder than ever in our circle tonight. We've at last been able to keep a fire going and we squash around it talking and laughing. Our faces show what the forests have done for us over the last week. We beam with friendliness. There have been three birthdays on the track and the cooks surprise us with chocolate cake. Since we humans are singing primates, three rounds of happy birthday erupt, followed by a long session of Earth am I, 
water am I, fire and air and spirit am I. Declan is happy. Thank you for my upbringing, he's whispered to me. We're spiritual friends now, Dharma bums, as well as family. I'm pleased I haven't needed him to push me up a single hill. But all the same, I suspect this third yatra could be my last. What does it matter? Mountains belong to the people who love them, whether they walk them or not.